granary, which is a reconstruction of the original building of 1786, serves as the entrance to the museum complex. It contains a fresh Feinbos display and a photographic exhibition of mountain passes linking the coast to the Little Karoo. The granary leads out onto the museum grounds. The Ethno-Botanical Garden contains plants that occur naturally in the Mossel Bay area. You can read about the fascinating variety of ways in which they have been put to use. Visitors can touch and smell the wonderful collection and the Braille Trail makes it accessible for sight-impaired people. The Maritime Museum, originally erected in 1901 to serve as a grain and sawmill, was adapted in 1987 to house as its centerpiece the life-size replica of the caravel in which Bartholomew Deer sailed into Mossel Bay in 1488. Caravels were a new sailing ship developed by the Portuguese in the 1400s. Their greatest feature was their lateen or triangular sails that made them more efficient at tacking into the wind. You can see the caravel and feel its unique and mysterious presence from any point in the three stories of galleries that encircle it. The museum houses informative displays on early Portuguese, Dutch and English maritime history. You can also see an interesting collection of maps and navigational instruments from the period. In the Maritime Museum foyer, there is a mural depicting the mythical figure of Adamasta, whom the gods sent to the southern tip of Africa to send out terrific storms to punish the Portuguese for daring to sail those southern waters. This beautiful urn was donated by the Portuguese government. It too features the mythical figure of Adamasta. Upstairs you will find an exhibit portraying the first recorded barter transaction on South African soil between the indigenous Khoi Khoi people and Vasco da Gama. The Maritime Museum also houses exhibits from the former Cultural Museum. Among them are various artifacts as well as photographs of the early history of Mossel Bay and even older artifacts used by Mossel Bay's earliest inhabitants, the Khoi Khoi and the Khoi San, whose forebears lived in this region for tens of thousands of years. One of the most popular attractions of the museum complex is the old post office tree a large milkwood that is well over 500 years old. In 1501, Portuguese mariner Pedro de Tida left an important letter in a shoe under this tree. A few months later, another Portuguese mariner, Joao da Nova, found this letter. In this way, the tree became the first post office in South Africa and has been declared a national monument. Any mail you post in the boot-shaped letterbox under the tree will get the special post office tree frank. In the letter that De Nova found under the tree, he read about troubles that Detida had experienced near Calcutta. As De Nova himself was on his way to India, he was so grateful for this timely warning that he erected a small stone chapel depicted in the stained glass window in the Maritime Museum. It was the first location of Christian worship in the southern point of Africa. This wooden cross stands where it is thought the chapel was built. The Shell Museum building, erected in 1902, was originally used as a store 
Today it is the biggest shell museum in South Africa, boasting a magnificent collection of shells from all over the world. Treat yourself to an imaginative exhibition portraying the use of mollusks by man, including some awe-inspiring African masks. There are also a number of aquaria where you can watch live animals in their natural habitat. On the museum grounds is the freshwater spring that Diaz named Ahuada de San Brush, or the watering place of St. Blaise. It was from this spring that water was obtained during many sea voyages, and it is still flowing today. A little further on, you will see the Monroe Hook cottages. Built in 1830 and restored in the 1980s, they are among the oldest buildings in Mossel Bay, with the front house being a national monument. Just adjacent to the museum complex is a natural garden that preserves the original vegetation of the Mossel Bay area. Milkwood is the most common tree species to be found here. Explore the garden and you will come across a replica of the Padrao, or stone cross, that Vasco da Gama erected here in 1497. A little lower down, you will find Malay graves facing Mecca on a piece of Muslim burial ground. Keep strolling through this peaceful environment and take in the magnificent views of the bay and site where Diaz landed over 500 years ago.